Rust is an increasingly popular programming language. In this course, you will improve your Rust skills by learning how to build an authentication server in Rust. Akhil Sharma developed this course. He is an experienced Rust developer and is a great teacher for beginners. So let's get started. In today's video, we're building uh, a authentication server. So we'll be using JWT. But for the APIs, we'll be using a framework called Warp. It's a web framework in Rust. The benefit of Warp is that it's a small, lightweight framework. So it helps you to get quickly started by building APIs. Uh, and, and there are a lot of use cases. So in, in the sense, there might be many projects where you don't want to build a full-blown uh, server, like you don't want to use Actix or you don't want to use Rocket because of the much bigger frameworks and with a lot of features. They're also heavier, slower, slower to build with, a lot of concepts, right? So in those cases, you might want to have something like Warp, which is very easy to learn, uh, very lightweight, very easy to, very fast to get started with, fast to build with, and fast to run. At runtime, it, it, it's also very fast. So Warp has a lot of benefits uh, and a lot of use cases. Uh, so uh, by, by the way, we've already built a project with Actix, right? Uh, it, was, it wasn't a full-blown project, like a very small, simple project. I just showed you how to use Actix. Right, uh, so you might want to check that out. I think that will be much before in the in the in this playlist series because in this video, even though this framework is much lighter, we're actually building a much bigger project than the one that we built with Actix, right? But the projects are com comparable in in the sense that even with this project that we're building, we're, we're not going to be using a database. We're actually just using a hash map, and that hash map we would already pre-create the users. And then when we log in, we'll just be comparing with the users that are already created in the hash map. Okay, so we don't have a database, just a hash map with pre-created users. We log in uh, and we'll do all of the things with JWT, like creating tokens, authentication. There's also one more thing here, which is role-based authorization. So we'll have different routes for users and admin, and we'll be checking if the user is a regular user or he's an admin. And depending on that, we'll be giving him access to the APIs. Okay. So that also is there. So that means it's uh, it's it's almost a, like a like a proper project for for JWT, right? You'll have regular authentication and role-based authorization. That means you could use this code in multiple places. <clears throat> All right. So what we'll do now is um, I have two terminals. Let me just show you my uh, screen. I have two terminals open here for you guys. One is the uh, place where I've already built the project. Now, I just want to tell you that this project is already built. It's on my GitHub, right? So I'll put the link of the project on GitHub, on, on this YouTube video. But in case I forget to do that, you just need to know that I'm Akhil Sharma 90 on GitHub. And all the projects, almost all of the projects that I've built are already there. Uh, and this one is definitely there because I just built it, just uploaded it, right? So... Here, uh, the project, the, yeah, the name of the project would be something like Rust Warp JWT example, something like that. Anyway, so now what we'll do is I'll just run it. I'll just say cargo run. Okay. And it's running. It's running on port 8000. And I will now interact with this project. So uh, the first thing that I'll do is I will hit the login route. Okay. On a different terminal, as you can see, I'm running, I'm hitting the, uh, the login route. All right, and I'm inputting the email, which is user at userland.com and password one two three four because this user is already created in my hash map, which is there in the session memory of the project, which is running at the moment. Right, there's no database, like I said, just a hash map. When I log in, I get the token. So this is what the JWT is doing here. It's creating a token for us. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll save this token somewhere. Okay, so I recommend if in case. You also have this project and you're uh, running it along. You might want to save this as well. But anyways, this is j just a demo. So in, in case you haven't forked my project from GitHub and, and are not running it on your system, it's completely all right. I'm just giving you a demo, right? I have copied it somewhere, the, uh, the, the token. And now I'm going to try to hit the user route, okay? So I'll just press a, enter, enter a couple of times, hit the user route, and it says, as you see, hello user one. That means, um, that means the um, JWT is able to determine that uh, this user already exists and it's able to 
check the token it's also an, un unable to get the information like the user type from the token so this means it, it allows me to hit and it also sends back a response saying hello user one okay uh, now what I'll do is I will um, I will try to hit the admin route with this token okay so let me bring out my command for the same sorry uh, yeah okay so this is my command the my curl command where I'm trying to hit the admin route with the same token the token that's meant for the user and I delete should not let me in because this is the admin route meant for the admin user not for the regular user so it'll say token not valid status 401 unauthorized all right so we have elaborate error handling in our project and that's also what we'll be building today okay and the next thing you want to uh, do is hit the login route but with the admin credentials so what I'll do is I will hit the admin route just a second yeah hit the admin route so you can see here the, sorry the login route but with the admin credentials so I have the admin created here with different password like I said these users are already created uh, whenever we start the project these users get created in the beginning and I'll show you how to do that we'll, we'll initialize these users right so we're just comparing that this user who already exists in session memory right now is it the same as this user that I'm sending in as request and yes it is so it's giving me a token now so what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste this token in a safe place and what I'll do is I'll try to hit now the admin route so we saw earlier that we were not able to hit the admin route right because it is, it is saying it's unauthorized but now if we try to hit the admin route it says hello admin 2 which is with the new token you're able to hit the admin route all right that's awesome so what I'll do now is I will again um, try to hit the user route and let's see what happens so I'll try to hit the user route with this admin token and let's see what happens so I will come here, I'll try to hit the user route, but with the admin token. So it remembers, it says hello user2. So that means the admin is able to hit not only the admin route, but also the user route, but the user is only able to hit the user route, not the admin route. Right. Okay. I hope that makes sense. It's quite elaborate, like the rules that we've put in, it's quite elaborate. And um, it's, it's like a full-blown working project you can just pick up the code use it on your project right if you have let's say a, a submission in your college or you're building something in your at your office in your job you're building something very quick it's the best way to build it all right uh, with GWT it has warp it has these APIs it has error handling it has uh, rules and authorization authentication everything is there anyhow so now let's get started so I'll just clear this all up I will stop this over from running and I will create uh, a new project. So I'll say cargo new and I'll give it a name like uh, Rust Warp. I'll say JWT and YT for YouTube. So I'll CD into it Rust Warp JWT and YT. Right. And you can see here cargo.tumble SRC. Now uh, I've not created videos in. Uh, in quite some time now and the reason for that is that uh, as many of you might know that uh, my startup armor.ai was selected by Techstars which was an ex which is an ex a great accelerator and then recently got selected by Outlier Ventures which is again an accelerator tech, tech accelerator and in the middle we also got grants from companies or from blockchains like Aptos so it's been extremely busy, very, very hectic. And basically, essentially what Armor AI is, it's, it's, a, it's a platform where you can build security tools. So it could be for Web 2, for Web 3, doesn't matter. Uh, the platform enables you to build security tools really easily. That's what we're building at, at Armor. Uh, anyhow, just wanted to update you on and why I've not been making a lot of videos. But then uh, now it's getting, things are getting a bit lighter. I'll have a little bit more time, hopefully. And whenever I have time in between the day, I'll just create a quick video like this, right? So that uh, I'm able to also keep in touch with the technologies. <laughs> 
Anyway, so I have it here. I am going to uh, open it up in my VS Code. Okay. Awesome. So there are two terminals, right? The other one, I can actually, I can just get rid of that. Okay. So here in my SRC, I have a main.rs, which is awesome. But I need two more files. I need my uh, all all the logic for my authentication and all the logic for my headers. I need that as well. Okay. So now another thing is it's it's uh, there's quite a lot happening in this project. So I'm just wondering where to get started with. Uh, I think I'll just remove. I'll just remove. Just get get rid of all of this, and. I'll start by just creating a user struct. Okay, let's just do that. So let's just create a user struct. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I, I, I'm not sure if you can see my screens. They're up in the sky, like up in the air now. Earlier they used to be on the on on the table. Now I've put them up in the air. So I will be just looking here, and because I have like four screens here, um, four different screens. So. Yeah, just want to tell you that. So, I, like, there's nobody else in the room. I'm not looking at the person when I'm looking here and here. I'm just looking at the screens. <laughs> All right. So, um, like this, ha having the same code window on two different places help. Like, instead of having like a split view, it's just better to have it on different screens. That's what I uh, was doing, right? So, uh, in the main dot rs, you have your user uh, struct, and I'm going to have a UID which is string an email which is again string okay and then password which is again string now I hope you all know what structs are you shouldn't be doing this video if you don't know the basics of rust by the way because I, I get a lot of comments on, on YouTube saying that hey I didn't understand uh, anything that you're teaching, it's obviously because I'm expecting that you know Rust uh, before if you want to build a like full-on project with frameworks in Rust, right? Uh, and a lot of people don't understand that and they just come and write on my videos, I'm not understanding anything you're saying and you're just talking, you're not explaining. It's because, it's because I'm not supposed to be explaining what is a struct in a video that's meant for uh, building projects for the web framework, right? So I need to give me that much of, <laughs> uh, like you have to have that kind of understanding at least. So anyways, even if you don't know what struct is, it's basically uh, enables you to create your own custom data types. Uh, so user is a data type here, which has a UID, which is string, email, which is string, password, and role, okay? Because role could be user or admin, as we just saw uh, in the demo. And in, then I have another struct for the login request. Okay, so I'll have two things, which is the request and the response for login. And sorry, I'm not able to look at my keyboard because of this mic. Let me just put it here. All right, so for the login request, I have uh, the email. So I'll send the email and I will send the password, email and password. So it's a very straightforward, simple, straightforward um, login. Okay, and then I have something called as the login response. Like I said, you know, when you um, when you make a request for logging in, that that is what this will look like. The login request will always look like this. It will have always an email and a password. And the login response will always look like this. It will have a token, right? So this is my way of defining the right request and response instructs, right? So that. It doesn't deviate, the project doesn't deviate from this. All right, so now because uh, I'm sending the request as JSON, as you just saw in the terminal, I was using um, the terminal and I was sending JSON requests, right? And I was receiving a JSON response. So I need to deserialize and serialize, right? Because Rust is not able to understand JSON on its own. And a lot of people coming from JavaScript background, they get very confused in this step, they think, Oh, but why is that, you know, why is Rust not able to understand that when, when JavaScript understands that by default? Because 
JSON is JavaScript object notation, and JavaScript already understands that by default. But Rust does not, Golang does not, and that's why we need to do this. Okay. So you're going to say deserialize here. In case you're uh, you don't you don't know how serialization deserialization works, there's a very detailed video that I've created on uh, in 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 this series itself, this video itself. It's in the towards the beginning where I explain the SERDE package, which is uh, the SERDE crate, sorry, which is what which enables us to do deserialization and serialization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first get that because uh, by default Rust doesn't have it, so we need to make use of the uh, SERDE package, deserialize and serialize. Okay, and you have that now. Now, for the user, uh, we'll have to work with the user object with, uh, multiple times, right? So, when we receive the user object in the, um, you know, so we will create the user object and it will be stored in the session memory as a hash map. We'll have to also compare with the user that we get, uh, you know, the user data that we get in the request and then we'll have to search for the users. So, we'll do a lot of operations with users where we need to have multiple copies of the users. So I'll just clone this. So I'll just say, I'll give it the ability to, that, that we're able to clone it uh, very easily. So I'll just say derive clone. And uh, now what we want to do is, we want to start working on the main function. So I'll say sync fn main, okay. And to be able to enable uh, the async function, we will be using Tokyo. So in case you haven't worked with Tokyo, there are multiple uh, videos on the same playlist, this Rust playlist. Multiple videos about Tokyo. Make sure you check them out. We've already built projects using Tokyo and the async, uh, the async functionality brings us uh, with it. So here we'll say let users equal to arc new init underscore users. Now init users is going to be a function that will help us create default users. So I'll repeat again, init users is the function that will help us create default users as the program starts. So before we make any requests, two users will already exist in our hash map. Uh, two users, one being the user, regular user, one being an admin user. That's how we'll compare the user coming in the request with these users in the hash map. We'll search for these, we'll compare them, and that's how we'll create the token, right? That's the whole logic that's going to be there. So arc that we've just written here, we'll have to add in the appropriate. Uh, so it comes in from standard sync arc. Arc is something that you use usually with things that you'll be using, uh, you know, things that you'll be cloning a lot. So in it, users is something like I mentioned, we'll be cloning quite a bit. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm not sure if I covered it with uh, C at the end, I made C capital here in clone. Uh, you just need to see that this color changes, right? So maybe uh, because I left for a quick break in, in between uh, just to get some water. So uh, maybe I didn't show you this, which is C is supposed to be capital. Make sure you do that in your code as well, okay? Then we got this arc now, arc new init users. All right. Um, so we have this now. And now we'll quickly create our routes using warp. Now we also need warp here. So I'll just quickly write use warp. And warp comes with reject, reply, Filter, we'll need filter as well, rejection and reply, okay? And we need warp now to be able to create these uh, routes in the main function. So we'll first say let login underscore routes. This is for the login route is equal to warp path login, okay? So this is how the login starts and We'll say dot and warp post request. So for that means for, for login, that's the path, right? For login route. And 
it will be a, a post method and we'll change some more things here so we'll say with underscore users and users dot clone so as you know we're going to be cloning users quite a bit that's why we have this here dot and warp body json okay because the request will be in json dot and underscore then and login underscore handler so essentially what's happening is if you hit the login route you need to have the login handler that's the main thing right and everything else is just helping us with that so we have that it's going to be a post route it's going to have users so you'll clone the users and, and perform some operations on the users because with, as you know with login you're going to be uh, trying to find those users in the hash map as we'll write more code it'll make more sense but just need to know that with login you need to have the login handler login handler is a function we'll create in a while just need to know that right uh, then we'll just create the user route and the admin route so user route is equal to again warp path and user okay dot and with auth here you'll have role user okay so what, what we're saying is for the user out it's obviously when we whenever we had the user out like slash user that's when we're supposed to come into this chain and the role of that user should be user so there will be two roles one is the user role the other is the admin role talking about the user role here and then you have the user handler okay talked about it just like we have the login handler we have the user handler here similarly we will have the admin route and the admin handler so admin route is equal to warp path admin okay dot and with auth and you have the role which is admin okay dot and underscore then admin underscore handler essentially login routes with slash login hits login handler this is a post request user route with slash user hits the user handler admin route slash admin hits the admin handler and generally let's just define the routes so routes is going to be login route okay or user route or admin route it might also recover so the error if it's not any of these routes we'll have the recover error which is handle rejection handle rejection is something we'll work with uh, mostly in our error.rs file but i'll mention it here error and handle rejection so what is this error so this error needs to be in the top so we'll say use error everything from the error mod okay and i'll just get also everything from the auth so error and auth are these two files that we'll be using as modules so i'll also get auth and here we'll have with auth and comma role right so we've done here uh we've used with users you're not used, yeah so we've used with auth also and the with auth you also pass role which is the user and that's the logic that we'll handle in our auth.rs file so that's why i've also gotten it from auth which is get with the auth and also the role okay because we're passing the role as well role user or role admin and here we can say mod auth and mod error all right now i need a couple of more things 
I need to be able to work with hash maps, like you know, because we'll be creating multiple users as the program begins, and that's the those are the users that we'll be comparing with when we have to do logins. So we'll need a hash map, and then I'll need another thing called infallible. We've used it before. It's when we don't want to return any error. Uh, that's when we use infallible. I'll use that also later on. So I'll just include them for now. Uh, so I'll say use standard. Just for a second, I'm not able to <laughs> look at my keyboard because of this mic. Uh, it's trying this new setup. So you have use standard, and you have collections hash map. Okay. And then you have use standard convert and fallible. Okay. So we've reached here. Finally, when you have defined all the routes, you can simply start off the server so we'll say serve all the routes and run the server on 137, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8, and we'll say dot await okay that's that now there's this function called with users so here we can go ahead and create that function. So we'll say function with underscore users takes in users, which is a collection of users with a capital U. So what does user with a capital U mean? User with a capital U is actually the struct. So multiple of those structs, because we'll have multiple users, like I said, will be uh, Collection of these structs, basically. The collection of these structs is assigned to users. Okay, so they will perform some functions on the users. So implement filter. Essentially, what you need to do is always we have that hash map of multiple users. We have not created those yet, but we'll create that in the init user function. Uh, this function we'll create it very very soon. But when you have that, when you have that hash map of multiple users, you need to be able to extract them, right? That's how you will, you know, go user by user, extract user by user, and then compare the details of that user with the ones that you'll receive in the request. Okay, that's why we're extracting it. So we'll say is equal to users, comma, comma, error, is equal to infallible plus clone so warp any dot map move users dot clone enables me to extract users okay so there are three functions that i need to write here one is the login handler the user handler and the admin handler so i'll at least create outlines of those functions so i'll say pub async function login handler okay the one that will be uh, called when i have when somebody hits the login path login handler so we will have users which is a collection of the users I have body which is the login request okay so i'll explain this again users is a collection of the user with the capital u the struct so multiple of users which are following this data type are the users that we'll have in users okay which is again here which we had cloned and in login handler you also have the body which is the login request so login request is something that you created here which will have an email and password so you'll have that also in the body which is the request body okay and we'll have to perform some operations with that. So like I, like I told you, you know, with the users, we're going to get the users one by one and compare it with what you got in the body, the details. That's what we'll be doing here, essentially. And there will be something called as the web 
I'll just push it down. Something called as the web result. So I'll say web result. Implement reply and match users. Users being multiple users, right? From uh, that we assigned it to this variable users. And you're going to how are you going to match? You're going to match them by iterating over the users, and we'll find. So, like I uh, I explained before that we have we'll have multiple users, and we'll go over each of those users that the function will help us to do uh, by iterating user by user. We'll go over them, and then we'll compare them with the details that we get in the request. That's how we'll come to know this user matches this user, which is there in the hash map. And that's how you'll uh, complete the login request. Uh, so here will be find underscore UID comma user user dot email equal to body dot email user dot password equal to body dot password. Okay. So, uh, for this web result, right, I will go up and I will create result and web results. So, I'll say type. So, it's a type that we have defined, type web result. Standard result result. Now, we'll have to define this result also, t comma. Rejection. Now to define this result, also I'll say type result t the standard result result t comma error error. All right, and then you have type which is users. In our case it's arc and it's a hash map of string comma each user right so this users that you're talking about all this while users like I said it's going to be a collection of multiple user which is the struct and here we've just officially defined it it's a it's a hash map it's an arc enables us to create uh, you know with, with the help of cloning you have a hash map which is string comma user Okay. All right. So here, now that we'll find that particular user, which is which matches the email, uh, the body email and the user email and user password and body password, which matches that, we need to perform some operation on it. Okay. So that means when we found it, we'll perform some operation on it. But before we do that, I'll just create the init users function so that things are much more clear. So I'll say sum here, even if I found it. Okay. So first I'll just create the init user function so that things make a lot more sense. So I'll because once I create this function, everything will become so much clearer to you that all your doubts will go away. Uh, so I'll create init underscore users function. And this has a hash hash map string comma sorry string comma user and we start with mute map hash map new map dot insert. This is the first user, so we'll say. Now, if you, if you remember here, we just created. So the the reason I'm following this particular order is because I'm taking it to everything. So users, there is a string, right? The string is actually we use it for like one, two, you know, the ID of the user, and then we'll have the user. 
Okay, and that's what we also had here, the ID of the user and the user, because we'll have multiple, when we go through multiple users, when we iterate through them. So anyhow, so the first thing is from, I'll create one, user number one, comma, and I'll say here, user, which is, if you see capital U, you mean, you, you know that I'm talking about the user, the struct. So here I have something called the UID, which is, String from one. Okay. Why? Because it starts with UID. Right. And then I have something called as email, which is again string from user at the rate userland.com. Comma, password, a string from one, two, three, four. Now these are all hard coded values. So I'm creating a hash map with these exact users. And if you remember the demo that I showed you, we were actually using this user details. We were using this email, exact email, exact password to be able to authenticate that user. That's what we're basically comparing. Role, string, and this particular user is has a role of users. That's that's why when we logged in this user and we got the token, we were not able to use that token to log in to the admin route, if you remember. Comma. So, and now we'll say map dot insert for the next user. So we want to create the next user now, and we'll say string from to second user okay comma user and we'll say uid string from to comma email again a string from admin Party.com password is string from four three two one and the role is string from admin. Right, so this user's role is admin, this user's role is user. As we know, admin is able to log in to both user and admin, but the user is not able to log into admin, just user. We'll do a comma here. And then finally, we'll just say map. All right, now we can come back here. So now that I've created the um, init users functions, now, now everything is very clear to you, right, that we have these two users and we are basically doing everything else that we've done here is to compare the data that we receive in the, in the request with the users, right? So when we found, so we are basically in the login handler, we are trying to get, uh, we're trying to find the user which actually matches this email and password because that's what we sent in the request. Once we've done that, we want to perform some operations. So we are going to create a token for him. So we'll say the token is equal to auth, create JWT, right? So in the auth module, we say auth because we have the auth module here, which is going to have a function called create JWT. We'll have a function in the auth.rs file called create JWT. Going to just send it the UID, comma, and the role from string user.role, where we would extract the user data dot map underscore error reject custom error so we say 
Okay. The flyers JSON. So I've, I've for, for the time being I've disabled Rust Analyzer and we'll activate it. So all of everything will get um, formatted correctly. But I'm just I've just disabled it so that I'm able to type with peace. So all of this happens when that particular user was found. So we created a token. But let's say if no user was, was found like that, which you know matches the email ID from that user that we were going through one by one, and it didn't meet meet the body email or the body password. What do we do then? So we'll say none, and we'll just send an error with a reject, and we'll say custom wrong credentials. Error. So when we say custom, that means basically we've defined these errors somewhere on our own. That's what we mean. And all that is there in the error file. We'll define all the errors now. Before I jump there, I'll just go through the entire code once again, just to be sure everything is fine. And then we'll just create the two handlers, the login and admin handler, which is very straightforward. But before that, just quickly, let's just quickly go through the code just to make sure everything is perfectly fine, perfectly all right. Okay, we have the web result and the users and the derived clone. Uh, we have the user, the login request, the login response, and login route, the user route, multiple routes. Yeah, everything looks, looks all right, okay, for now. And now I will just create the user handler and the admin handler. So I'll say pub async function user underscore handler user ID string. We already have web result. Reply. Right, so you remember in the demo that when the user was logging in, it said user one, user two, admin two, like that, hello user one, right? So this is where it's all happening. So we're just saying hello user and we're embedding the UID there. And similarly for the admin handler, we will have the exact same function. So I'll say admin handler takes in all of this, says hello admin and with the admin's ID. That completes our main.rs file. So now we, we have the error file to complete. Okay, and then we have our auth file to work on. All right, so now you know that we've completed the main.rs file. I will now work on the auth.rs file. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that I can define is the enum role, and I know that role has. Uh, role can be of type user, which is the struct that I've created, or it could be admin, so two, two different values, right? user or admin. And then I'll implement some functions for role. So for example, this function from string gets the role from string, and you get back role, role being the enum, right? So From string, uh, like in the uh, request, you send the token. From the token, you'll come to know if the user is a user or an admin, and that will be a string, right? And then we'll, you want, but that your string, you want that to be in the form of the role, the role which is either user or admin. So you can compare, so you get back the role, right? <clears throat> and now I'm gonna match role. If it's admin, 
I'm going to say role admin or role user. All right. So there needs to be one more closing bracket. Makes sense. So in a JW token, to create a JW token, you need claims also, right? So we'll, I'll create the claims struct here, but I'll come back to it once I create the create JW function. Okay, so here we have the create JW function, which helps us create the token. So here first you have the UID, which is a string role, which is <coughs> yeah, role, which basically, sorry, this from string is small s. Make sure you make that change as well. Okay, so for here role is role, which is the ampersand role and you get back the result from here which is string so what all <clears throat> what all does a token comprise of it's the expiration time or date time date and the claims and the header right so first let's have the expiration we need the UTC package here, obviously. UTC now, which is the time, which is right now. And then you'll say dot checked add signed using chrono duration. This is valid for 60 seconds. It's the expiration time. So if you were to use this after 60 seconds, it won't function. Dot expect valid timestamp dot timestamp okay so now the other thing is the claims and here this will be equal to claims with the capital C which should be this struct that we create here the claims will have sub which will be string have the role which will again be string and the expiration which will again be u size okay and here you need three things which is derive debug comma deserialize comma serialize we'll be deserializing and serializing it but to have deserialize and serialize we need serde so we'll say use serde deserialize comma serialize right and we also use chrono so we'll say use chrono get everything from chrono essentially Okay, so for claims, we've defined what claims looks like. Uh, here also for the role, we'll say hash drive and clone with a capital C comma partial q a coming to the claims we have to work with three things sub which is actually the uid so two underscore owned comma we have the role which is role dot two underscore string 
and we have the expiration which is essentially expiration as u size which is the type right string u size the types comma and Finally, as, as I mentioned, the token will have expression claims and will have header. So, we'll have header is equal to header new using the HS512 algorithm. And we'll encode the header, the claims with the encoding key from and source secrets JWT secret dot map so error so JWT token creation okay so first let's um let me actually use json web token that basically gives us the ability to decode encode gives us the algorithm that we just used right so you we use something called as encoding and or the encode function which requires headers and claims which we have right now headers and claims uh, the header will have the al the algorithm, different type of algorithms which can be selected by us, and then the encoding key, which is JWT secret. We, we have to create that encoding key right now. Algorithm comma decoding key comma encoding key comma header comma validation. All these things we need. And when I, I'll also use the FMT package and I'll need warp, obviously. In warp, I'll have filters, header, headers cloned, and I'll have HTTP header, header map, comma, header value, comma, authorization and we'll have reject filter and rejection we'll use this now but up until now what we've done is we've created uh, enum for role I'll, I'll just switch bring this out here We have created the enum for role, created the implementation for role. So this shouldn't be here, this should be here actually. Okay, with the with the enum, with the data type. And this is the implementation of function for role, which as, as I said, helps us to get role, which is admin. And if the string is admin, we'll define role as admin, which is part of the enum, role enum. Otherwise, it's user. Then we have claims which has role and ex, uh, expiry which are the two more important uh, fields the create jwt function takes an uid and role and sends a result which is a string uh, which in our case will be the token actually and first we create expiration with the help of chrono chrono uh, package helps us create the expiration time which is 60 seconds for the token and expecting a valid timestamp then you have claims which is uid role and expiration all three and you have header header creating starting of header with uh, the algorithm that was uh, access to 512 in our case which it has which you get from the json web token library and then you use the encode function so what you do essentially not sure if you use json web token before but I've uh, I've shown that on YouTube, I think with the Node.js video also and with the Golang video also. The way to create a JWT token, and you can also go to their website and try this same thing out. The way to create a JWT token 
is to use some information that you will hash, right? So you'll create a hash from some information. So you'll use this algorithm and some information like header and claims and use the encode function, which will use this algorithm to hash that data that you send it and you get a key from it. Now to, to hash it, you use uh, a secret key, which is in our case, JWT secret. And we can define it here. So on the top, we can just go here before this. We can just say, we'll define it as constant. So constant JWT secret is our type U8. Secret. We'll also define the bearer. So what's this? This is basically the thing that you see uh, in your authorization. So you say authorization, right? Whenever you send a token in the request, you say authorization, and then you also say bearer, and then the token. Okay, so we'll see this value called authorization, we'll see this value called bearer. And JL token, a JL secret is just the constant used for and as the encoding key to encode our header and claims and get the hash based on this algorithm. And this error, we have not defined it yet, it will be in the error.rs file, and we'll work on that in a while. Okay, so there's another function called with auth. So if you go to your main.rs file, you'll see this function being used called with auth, with underscore auth. And we, we are expecting this function to be created here. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll say public function with underscore auth. Let's see what it takes in. So this, it takes in the role. So you're passing the role as user or role as admin. Again, this role or user, role or admin are coming from your enum, role of user, role of admin, okay? Now that we're connecting the dots, things will make sense. Maybe you are confused here why we're writing it like this, but it all makes sense when we have, uh, because we, we are, we're going in a particular order, we can't do everything all at once. So sometimes things end up, we, write, we end up writing some things before they actually exist in the other file. But now as we've, we, we're, um, connecting all the dots, everything will make sense, okay? So this is the function that we want to work with now, function with auth, and here we have role, takes in role, and we'll implement filter, Extract is equal to string from a error is equal to rejection. Headers cloned dot map move headers header map, header value, So essentially, it's, a, it's just a long way of saying we're cloning the headers that you get in the, uh, along with the role, you get, you clone the headers and you basically, um, you call the authorized function. That's what essentially you're doing. So in the authorized functions, you will be passing the headers and the role. Okay, and the authorized function is the main place where we we'll write all the logic. So what's happening here is, when somebody hits the user route, we want to, uh, because they're also sending in the token, right? In the login route, when, the, when they hit the login route, because of the login handler, they will be able to create uh, the 
um, the token, right? So the create JWT function gets called from the auth package, auth module. So create JWT function, something that we created right now, which basically creates the um, token for you. So after you have the token, that's when you call the user route, right? Which starts with slash user. Call that route when you have a token. So here you're passing uh, you're passing the role which is of user because you're, you're expected to be a user if you're hitting the user out. So you um, check if that user is is legit or not in the sense he has the right token or not. If he has the right token, only then you will enter this function called user handler. You have the user handler function already. It's supposed to send hello user and then the UID. But to be able to reach here, you need the uh, you need to first cross this function called with auth. Now the with auth, as you've seen, takes in the role which is the the user, and it's going to essentially call the authorize function. So in the authorize function, we're going to pass the role and the headers. Okay. So let's, let's actually create that function here. That's an async function. So async function authorize role comma headers. Role comma header map. So you, you might notice that we have to write a lot of boilerplate code like here we have to define that role is of type role and headers of type header map header value here also in in the with auth function you're doing the same headers is of type header map header value right all of that we're defining all of that but but that's only because rust is highly uh, you know has a lot of strict typing and it ensures that you don't end up creating a lot of errors so here you'll say match jwt underscore from underscore header plus headers here. Now this function jwt from header, we will have to create this function as well. So just write here function jwt from header, right? So when you pass the token, the JWT token in the request, it goes in, in the header, right? So you say minus H, and then you say authorization, then you say bearer, and then the token, right? So because it's in the header, you need to be able to get it out. You need to be able to get out the token because that's how you will compare, right? Match basically means comparing, matching tokens. Only if the tokens match can we, uh, you know, get the user to log in. But the way to match is we need to uh, decode the token as well, right? Because we have encoded the token. First, we encoded using the encoding key. We use the encode function. And now we'll also use in the authorize function, we'll have to use the decode. Uh, the decode function. So you'll say in the decoded, this is where you'll store it. So decode claims ampersand JWT comma ampersand decoding key from under source secret JWT under source secret. And validation. So you got to give it the algorithm with the help of which the encoding was done, and you're going to decode with the same. It's decoded HS512 
So this bracket I've created here is wrong. Should be the wrong bracket. Dot map the error underscore here reject custom again this error we will create jwd token error okay that means there's some issue with the token and then we'll match the role if role equal to the role admin so when you have these four dots right you you're saying that role admin which is role meaning role with capital r enum and admin this role is the same as the role that we just got now that was passed from the body to this function and role from underscore string decoded dot claims dot role is not equal to role admin okay. return error reject custom error no permission error. Yeah, so if it's not an admin, if the person is not admin and he's trying to access the admin route, then we will say that you don't have permission to do this. And that will basically be defined in the no permission error. Okay. And we'll say okay decoded dot claims dot sub here we'll handle the error we'll just return error saying reject custom header so this is your authorized function okay now coming back to this function which is the um, jwd from header function which helps us get get the token from the header so here again, we'll be working with those two things, two two fields or two uh, two components of the token uh, of the, of the request body. One is the authorization. So whenever we pass a token, right, we say authorization, and then uh, then we say bearer, and then actually the token, right. So we need both of those things. So we'll just check for both those things, and then after that, what comes is the token. And that's what we will return from this function. So we'll say headers which is of type header map header value return a result with string okay that header is equal to match headers dot get authorization If the value is matching, then we'll return the value. Otherwise, we'll just return an error saying error is no auth header found. It's no auth header error. Right? That will basically show that there was no auth header. If there was an auth header, we'll just return that. But there was none, we'll just say no auth header error and this error we will define in the error module okay and you will um, 
get that from header so so i'll have to import those crates so i'll have to say use crate error result web result okay okay so now i have the error crate and result and web result result and web result are these that we've defined here anyhow so coming back to jailbreak from header <clears throat> so let's get the auth header which is a matching standard string from utf8 header dot as underscore bytes the value otherwise again we'll return the same error which is no auth header header And if there's no odd header, that starts with pairer, then we will return, sorry, then we will return error invalid auth error. Error, error. Okay, okay, r underscore header dot trim start. So you're trimming the part which is the bearer part, and after that is the token, right? So you, whenever you pass a token to make a request, uh, you say, like I said, authorization, and then the uh, bearer, and then the actual token. So you want to remove or trim the part that start matches with. Bearer. All right. So that's it. That's that completes the auth.rs file. Uh, what we'll do is we'll quickly go through everything just to make sure everything is correct. Uh, and the file and then we'll wrap it up so you have pair you have jwb secret you have the role the implementation for the role the uh, yeah there's one more thing that's pending which is where we'll use this fmt package which will be in the uh, implement fmt display for role the right way to display the role to format it let's format it properly which is and self comma f ampersand mute fmt formatter now this is completely optional you don't have to do it you don't have to do this formatting i'm just doing it Okay, so the formatting part is complete. We have claims, we have with auth, we have uh, 
create JWT function. We have uh, authorize, we have JWT from header. Right, so quite a bit. Now, the only thing that's left is the error.rs file. To do that, I will quickly create an enum for the types of errors that we'll have. And we'll, we've already used those errors in the other two files, which is the main file and the auth file. So we shouldn't have, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't be a big challenge for us now. So what we'll say is, we'll say, uh, enum and error. So what kind of errors that I've used? I've used the wrong credential error, sorry, the wrong credentials error. I've used the JWT token error, okay? I've used JWT token creation error, this one. I've used the no so that's the benefit with ID, using a good IDE is that you get these suggestions based on the errors that you already used. The other is invalid auth header error and the no permission error, okay? And we'll just also write here error, wrong credentials, JWT token not valid. Then we have JWT token creation error and no auth error. So no auth header error. And then have invalid auth header. And no permission. Okay. So what does the error response look like? So what I'll say is struct an error response looks like this. You have message which is a string, you have status which is a string. And then in the beginning what you'll do is You'll say use so they serialize use standard convert infallible because I'll be using this and this as well. So I'm just making them right now so that I, have to, I don't have to come back here. Use warp because obviously we'll use warp here as well. HTTP and status code, comma, rejection, comma, reply. Awesome. Okay, now that we have everything, uh, you know, the, the basics built, we'll just implement warp, reject, reject for error. And now most importantly, the handle rejection function. So this one, this function handle rejection, which comes from the error module. That's the function that we want to create now. So we'll say pub async function handle rejection.
Now, after writing all of this code, obviously we will have to. So I'll just drink some water. Obviously, we will have to. Turn on the Rust analyzer because I'm sure I've, we have made a lot of mistakes. But well, that's completely all right. Uh, this is all about working in broad strokes in the beginning, and then figuring out how to fix the code because you don't want to break your thought process too much so just write what's coming to your mind here and then we'll fix everything we'll get into details and fix everything right now this is a very different way of working but it works really well the code message is equal to if error dot is not found we will say status code not found not found dot to our source string okay here we'll say else if let sum error dot find error and then you'll let's match the error right so if there's no error uh that, that, that error does not exist so we'll say not found otherwise you'll just if there is an error you'll just match it with these ones so the first one is the wrong credentials error then you'll have the no permission error then you'll have the JWT token error and then we'll have the JWT so this match function enables you to match the exact error then take um, the right action based on the error now again uh, this entire file which is error handling is completely op optional in the sense you don't have to do it if you're not building like production grade stuff but if you are building production grade stuff then it's uh, it can be really helpful right you don't want to build a project that doesn't have any error handling so here if i have wrong credentials error what i want to do is i want to say status code forbidden comma e dot to underscore string Here I'm going to say status code unauthorized e dot to understood string status code okay unauthorized to underscore string. And for this, we will say status code internal server error internal server. Now, all of this that we are doing right now is very, very basic, simple code. There's nothing. Uh, there's no business logic here nothing that's uh, happening that's critical it's just error handling matching the error right with the right uh, with the error type and then giving the right status for it so at the end you'll say comma and status code Add underscore request uh, e dot two 
underscore string this is e dot to string and then after that it's else if error dot find warp reject method not allowed that was underscore sum Third underscore not underscore allowed, and the actual text that will be returned, which is method not allowed, and it will be two underscore string. So, in case you don't want to build this entire file, you can just copy and paste it as well. Not a problem. I copy and paste it directly from my GitHub. Is all just error handling and once you do this in this file or in this project you can um, you can do it in any other file also you can just copy and paste this so what's essentially happening here is we're matching the error with the type of error sending the particular status code like 401 500 blah 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 this is 500 for example this is 401 for example right and with the message the error message right and here, uh, if there's nothing here, then it's just bad request, right? No type of error is matching, so it's bad request. And then we're also uh, handling for method not allowed. So if, if method not allowed basically means if it's uh, it was meant for post, but you were trying to get, right? So that's method not allowed. So that also we're handling out here. And here we'll say e print. There's just very basic error handling. I'm sure. You already know all of this and then and then comma error here status code internal server error comma internal So we're dot two underscore string. Then we have let JSON equal to warp. Reply JSON error response status code dot string on the message. And finally okay warp reply with status json comma call okay so each error has some json message which is the json and the code which is the status right the code has code is like 401 500 like that and the message is basically a json right JSON has both of those things and code. All right, so this is our error handling file. And now we'll go ahead and um,
I'm looking for Rust Analyzer actually. Just say Rust. Let it come up. Yeah, so I'll just enable it. And, and I get lots of errors, which is nice because we will now fix them one by one. All right, so in the main.rs file, if you go to the login handler function, just login request needs to be one word, right, because that's how we created the struct, and sum needs to be capital S. So that fixes two small headers, hopefully. And now we'll just add some dependencies because those are the uh, packages that we're using. So once we add some dependencies, hopefully the some of the issues should go away. So here we have uh, uh, the version addition, all of that. And de dependencies, I'll just add the ones that I'm using. So you can just copy and paste from my cargo.toml file in case you want to write it on your own. You can do that as well. So we're just using JSON Repto in Tokyo, Warp, Surdy, sorry, JSON, this error, Chrono, debug, uh, sorry, profile dev, profile test, profile release. So I've added those now. And as you see now for main.rs, a lot of the, uh, almost all of the issues have gone away. So it doesn't show any issues anymore. All the issues that are pending are in error.rs, but now again, no, now again I can see <laughs> in main.rs there are some, there's five issues again. All right, so, so we move that and then let's find the pending issues. Now in the auth.rs file, there is in the pub enum role, there is one comma missing, put that there, and here instead of fun which is fn i've written fun which is <laughs> fun so when you when you save that uh you just left with three errors here and then just four errors here right so suddenly the errors have become much less with the error.rs file there are many things that are wrong so here should not have the comma should have semicolon here semicolon here and on top of that you need derive error bug out here and derive serialize bug out here so that should hopefully take care of a few issues right so now and take a look four issues are left in the error.rs file but auth and main these two files are working completely, right? So there's, because there's dependency between these files, when I fix issues here, both these files are now like, they're perfectly fine. They don't have any issues at all. We just have to find four more issues now. One really small issue that I found here is that there's double colon missing and now we left with one one small issue and then the final issue is that two string the s should have been small in the error.rs file now we see all the issues have gone away so the natural step now is to do cargo run And let's test out just one API and then we're sure everything else will work because, because there are no issues and we have built it very carefully. Let's try at least one API. <clears throat> okay, so I will open up terminal and let's check out if everything works as expected. Yes, we got the token, everything's working perfectly fine. Now, let's say uh, if this code is not correct, maybe because I've not tested all the other APIs, maybe if this is not correct, you don't have to worry because I'm going to be uploading the correct code, which was which I showed you in the demo, right? Even though this code is correct, but like just for your peace of mind, 
I'm going to upload the, the code, which is um, the, the one I showed you in demo, right? So it's already uploaded in GitHub. Feel free to take a look. Now you know how that code works. You have a complete idea about that. Uh, so we learned a lot in this video, quite a lot, right? We understood how to use warp, how to create APIs, how to handle errors, uh, how to use JWT in, in uh, Rust for authorization, how to encode, decode, how we used uh, the claims, the uh, expiration, and how we created the um, token, and then the role, you know, how we had tools for admin and user. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in this video that we've learned. I hope you learned a lot as well. Um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, do share this with your friends. Do share this uh, playlist with your friends. It's all free and it's um, good information, right? Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.